the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. is autumn. Yes, beautiful autumn. In the words of the great poet Keats, season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. And in the words of the great Shelley, there is a harmony in autumn and a luster in its sky. And in the words of the great Gildersleeve. Autumn. Leaves all over the darn lawn. <laughs> Leroy, I'd rake them up in one big pile. Okay. Leroy, I wouldn't leave little bunches around like that. What's the trouble, Leroy? You're making me nervous. Now, now, we mustn't be afraid of a little work. I'm doing all the work. You're just sitting up there on the porch. Well, we made an agreement, young man. You agreed to rake the leaves. I agreed to pay you a quarter. We shook hands on it. Okay, just don't make me nervous. Uh, 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 uh. Uh-oh. Craig's coming over. Little red-headed pest. <laughs> Hello, Craigie, my boy. What you doing, Leroy? Feed it. What you doing? I'm raking the leaves. What's it look like I'm doing? We have a gardener to rake our leaves. Little snob. <laughs> and I wouldn't bother Leroy right now if I were you, Craig. What are you putting the leaves in a big pile like that for? You heard what my uncle said. Feed it. I'm going to jump on the pile. You're not. I am. You're not. Ugh. Now, Craig, you stop bothering Leroy. I'm going to jump on the pile. No, you're not. Now, you go on home, you little... Hey, darling, get it ready. Hey, who's that? <laughs> yeah, never saw her before. Craig. Say, she's cute. I wonder what she's doing over at the Bullards. Craig, that cute, uh, that nice young lady's calling you. Get it ready. All right. I'll send him right over I could bring him over if you like. Won't be any trouble. He's awfully little to be crossing the street by himself. I am not. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> little Craigie. Come on, Craig. Well, hmm. Have to get acquainted with her. Wonder who she is. Here I come. What? Get out of here, you little sweet. What's the matter, Leroy? Don't Leroy, you stop chasing Craig. I'll get you later, you little bum. Leroy, you go on in the house. I'll talk to Craig. Little bum, that's what he is. I'll get even with him. Craig? Yeah? <laughs> that nice young lady. Didn't know you had a visitor. A friend of the family? I don't know. Relative, maybe? I don't know. Is she staying long? I don't know. Well, she's at your house. You ought to know something. Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Get out of here. Go on, beat it. Go on home to... <laughs> Go on home to supper. Dinner. What? We call it dinner at our house. Beat it. <laughs> that girl looked awfully nice from here. Wonder if I'd get Bullard to introduce me. No. Guess he's still mad at me for backing into his car. Well, Columbus took a chance. I'll go over right after supper. Uh, dinner. Supper. <laughs> Oh, Buller doesn't bite my head off. Oh, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Bullard. I brought back this snow shovel I borrowed last winter. 
<laughs> Sorry I kept it so long. Oh, that's all right, Gildersleeve. It is? Anytime you want it again, don't hesitate to ask for it. Uh, well, then you're not angry about... About your running into my car? No. After all, accidents will happen. Anyhow, my insurance company took care of it. <laughs> I'm uh, afraid I haven't been as neighborly as I should have been. Matter of fact, I was just thinking tonight about inviting you over. You were? Yes, we have a young lady house guest. Oh, is that so? It's uh, Mrs. Bullard's cousin. I'd like to have you come over to make a fourth at Bridge some evening. Bridge? Oh, I'd be delighted. <laughs> What kind of a ruffian is your nephew attacking a little boy six years old? Yeah, six years old. <laughs> well, I'm sure Leroy didn't do it on purpose. Uh, did you, my boy? Sure I did. He had it coming to him. Gildersleeve, get that little gangster off my property before I throw him off. Bullard, you lay one finger on that little gang on Leroy, I'll... you what? Go on, hit him, Unc. You keep out of this, Leroy. Gildersleeve, if I never see you again, that'll be too soon. Come on, Frank. Ah, we sure showed him, didn't we, Unc? Leroy... <laughs> stand here all morning waiting for her to come out. I'll take one more peek. Just pull the curtain back a little. Oop, there she is, on the porch. She's walking toward town. Don't just stand there, Gildersleeve. Get the lead out. Get on your horse. Oh, madam, and... Oh, miss. Yes? Like a lift? Remember me? When you called Craig yesterday, I was sitting on the porch. The heavy set fellow, remember? Oh, yes, you're Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes. <laughs> like a lift? I don't mind walking. No trouble, going right your way. Well, all right. Here, hop right in. Thank you. Here, I'll, I'll just toss this briefcase in the back. Oh, oh. oh. Didn't mean to knock your hat off. <laughs> Sorry. Let me get it. Oh, one of the grapes fell off. <laughs> here. Thank you. Well, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is quite a coincidence. What's that? Well, I'm going downtown the same time you're going downtown. Oh, yes. Mr. Bullard said you probably would be. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, this your first visit to Summerfield? Yes, I'm spending my vacation here. Oh, is that so? Yes. Oh, I'm Ann Tuttle. Uh, pleasure's all mine. Uh, here alone? Yes. Mr. Tuttle couldn't come, eh? No, he couldn't. Oh. <laughs> you see, there isn't any Mr. Tuttle. Oh, uh. <laughs> Uh, on a vacation, eh? Mm-hmm. The office gives us two weeks. Hi, uh, George. You stenographers deserve a vacation. Taking dictation from cranky bosses like me. Oh, I'm not a stenographer, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Run a switchboard? No, I'm head of the advertising department. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Tuttle, vacations come but once a year. That's the time to have fun. If there's anything I could do to help you enjoy your stay here... Thank you. Be glad to show you around town. I'm the water commissioner, you know. Any day you'd like to go through the waterworks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you can let me out any place along here. Oh, I didn't realize we were downtown already. This will be fine. Miss Tuttle, uh, like to go for a ride? Show you the sights? No, thank you. Uh, care to ride around the block a few times? No, thank you. I'll, I'll just get out here. Better let me take you to the corner. Well, all right. You good. What the heck? <laughs> What's the matter with this thing? Just had it overhauled about a year ago. <laughs> Darn mechanics. Okay, okay. 
Keep your shirt on. Oh, Philip, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Hooker! Get a horse, Gildy. Look here, you old goat. Why don't you move over and let the young lady drive? Oh, why don't you... See? Maybe he could push you over to the curb. Push me? Oh, yes, a very good idea. How about giving me a push, you old goat? Yes, I'll have to. Take it out of here. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, another grape fell off your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Take it easy, will you? <laughs> a man his age shouldn't be allowed to drive a car. See? Uh, we made it. You sit right there, Miss Tuttle. I'll have it fixed in a jiffy. I'll get this wrench here. All right. Uh, tires look okay. Anything I can do to help you, Gildy? No, thanks, Judge. You're probably in a hurry to get somewhere. No, I'm in no particular hurry. I can handle this horse. Uh, take a look under the hood. Let's see here. <coughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting this charming young lady. <laughs> I knew he'd try to horn in. <laughs> Gildy! Miss Tuttle, this is Judge Hooker. See you later, Judge. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Tuttle? I don't think I've seen you gracing our fair city before. Listen to him. This is my first visit. Well, it's always nice to gaze upon a new face, especially when, as the poets say, tis more than passing fair. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judge, if you're going to help me, come on. Please excuse me, Miss. How can I be of assistance, Gilda? Well, you can, uh, you can hold this hood up. I've got my head in here, you know. Maybe your spark plugs are dirty. No, I think the points need filing. Sure it isn't the plug. No, it's the points. Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, oh, oh, yes, Miss Tuttle. I'm just checking the motor. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think the car is just flooded. Flooded? Oh, no, no. I've located the seat of the trouble. It's the points. Still think it's the plugs. If you just turn this little lever on the carburetor... Careful now. You get your fingers all greasy. You can drain the gas off. Like this. Well, <laughs> now, I think if you'll just step on the starter now, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, 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 Go on, Gildy. I'm afraid it won't do any good, but there's no harm in trying, I guess. <laughs> you seem to have had automotive experience, Miss Tuttle. Well, not very much, Judge. I did some driving overseas. Miss Tuttle! You don't say. I chauffeured a colonel around. Miss Tuttle! Imagine that. Miss Tuttle, if you want to get in, I can take you down to the corner now. Oh, I think I'll just walk. Thank you for the ride, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Goodbye. Bye, bye. Goodbye, Judge. Bye, Miss Tuttle. Well, Gildy, as we say in court... Chase dismissed. <laughs> Go chase an ambulance, you old goat. <laughs> we'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a minute. You know, as the parquet reporter, I go around looking for news about parquet, the craft quality margarine. But occasionally, the news goes looking for me, like today. Mr. Wall, I've been hoping I'd see you. I got something to tell you about parquet margarine. I knew you'd be interested. Yes, I am, Bertie. What's the story? Well, sir, I got to checking over my old grocery bills the other day, and you know what I found out? I'd like to know. Yes, sir, I knew you'd be interested. Well, I am, Bertie. What did you find out? Mr. Wall, I found out that I'm paying less for parquet now than I was a year ago. Bertie, that's certainly good news in these days of high prices. You bet. I knew you'd be interested. And, of course, parquet's still the same fine spread. It's a craft product, and that means a quality product. Parquet margarine contains 15,000 units of vitamin A per pound. That means added nourishment when you spread parquet on bread, toast, muffins, or waffles. So when you add up quality, nourishment, and economy. There are plenty of reasons for using parquet, aren't there, Bertie? Oh, shucks. We use it because it tastes so good. How right you are. And that's why millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine. Be kind to your pocketbook and enjoy the fresh flavor of parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> The 
The great Gildersleeve is having a trying day at the office. He has a big decision to make. And just like Hamlet, he can't make up his mind. To phone or not to phone? That is the question. Why, George, I'll do it. All Miss Tuttle can do is turn me down. Never know till you try. Hello? This is Mr. Gildersleeve. Can I see you tonight? Oh, it's all right with me, Mr. Gildersleeve, if Mrs. Beebe doesn't mind. Beebe? Wrong number. How did I get him? Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Tuttle. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes. Uh, Miss Tuttle, I was going to inspect the reservoir tonight. See if there was enough water in it in case there might be a fire. <laughs> I thought you might like to go with me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I can't go tonight. Oh? You see, Mr. and Mrs. Bullard are going out, and I offered to stay home with Craig. Home alone? Well, maybe I could drop over for a while, keep you company. Oh, well, that would be nice. Wonderful. I'll be over early. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, what about the reservoir? Huh? Oh, I can inspect that some other time. <laughs> Anyhow, there won't be a fire tonight. This is fire prevention month. <laughs> well, if it ain't the commission. Uh, afternoon, Floyd. Climb right up in the chair. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, what's your pleasure? Well, I can stand the haircut, I guess, Floyd. You can trim my mustache a little. Stepping out tonight, Commish? None of your business, Floyd. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I understand there was a little commotion downtown this morning. What was that? Some fellow stalled his car, couldn't fix it himself, had to get some female to get it going for him. <laughs> what? Yeah, she crawled right under the car. She did not. Ha, <laughs> ha, so that's the dame. Hooker's been in here gassing, I see. I've been a close follower of your romance as commissioner, and you've had some Lulus. But I never saw you go for a lady mechanic before. She's not a lady mechanic. She works in an office. Not driving a truck anymore, huh? <laughs> she never drove a truck in her life, Floyd, just because she drove some colonel around during the war. Sounds like the rugged type, all right. Confound it, Miss Tuttle's a dainty little thing. Hey, uh, watch it. Almost got a piece of your ear then. <laughs> well, I'd stay away from her, Commissioner. I knew a fellow once ran around with a woman like her. Lady wrestler. Ye gods. <laughs> yeah, I seen her once, a big woman, but handsome. Had a butterfly tattooed on her arm. Tattooed? Their romance didn't work out so good. She could do everything better than he could. <laughs> Floyd, I'm not interested. Like, for instance, he'd take her to a carnival. She'd outdo him on everything, right down the midway. You know them things you hit with a sledgehammer? Show how strong you are? Well, every time she walloped it, bingo. She'd ring the bell and win the cigar. <laughs> Fellow finally got so depressed he joined the Navy. Floyd, I'll thank you to just concentrate on your scissor work. Them kind of dames are dynamite. I knew another one like her once, a lady steeplejack. They used to call her the human fly. Floyd, she... Miss Tuttle is... Oh, what's the use? Me? Well, hello, Peavy. Hey, give me a couple of cigars. Just had a haircut, I think. Yeah, yeah. Nice, no nice. Uh, there you are. Thank you. Car running all right now, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> yes, of course. What makes you ask that? Oh, no special reason. I heard you had a little repair work done this morning. Peavy, I don't know what Hooker told you, but it's not true. The whole thing is ridiculous. Miss Tuttle is a fine young woman. Oh, sure she is. She's not a lady mechanic, and she's not a lady wrestler either. Well, I didn't say she was. Of course, I haven't seen the young lady. Uh, does she have large biceps, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> no, Peavy, she's a dainty little thing. Intelligent, too. Why, she's the head of a whole advertising department. Oh, the executive type. Mm. What's wrong with that? 
Oh, nothing, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's just that I prefer the other kind. Now, take Mrs. Peavy. She's what you'd call the stay-at-home type. Every night when I come home, there she is. Of course, it gets a little monotonous sometimes. <laughs> Peavy, there may be a point to all this, but I fail to see it. But even with Mrs. Peavy, I have to watch myself. Can't afford to let her get the jump on me. Oh, for... I don't need any advice from you, Peavy. I can take care of myself. No woman has ever made a monkey out of me. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Won't you come in? Uh, thank you, Miss Tuttle. <laughs> if you'll just go into the library, I'll be right with you. I was just saying good night to Craig. Craig, oh, of course. Uh, Miss Tuttle sure looks nice tonight. Lady wrestler. <laughs> that Floyd, she's not that type at all. Never could tell, though. <laughs> I'd better show her who's boss. Get off on the right foot. Sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, please sit down. After you, Miss Tuttle. You sit down first. You're a woman. <laughs> well, all right. I think I'll move my chair a little closer to the fire. Uh, just a minute. What? I'll move your chair. That's a man's job. Well... It's too heavy for a dainty little thing like you. I'll handle it. <laughs> Steadier than I thought. <laughs> oh, Oh, my goodness, I didn't see that smoking stand. I'll... It's all right. I'll get it. No, no, let me. I knocked it over. I'll just clean up these ashes. You sit down. Thank you. There. I'll just sit here. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Miss Tuttle, so you were overseas. Yes, for a while. Imagine that. But you must have some real stories to tell. Well... Driving around in those air raids, things like that. A little girl like you. Oh, it wasn't so... Must have been pretty dangerous, all right. I know just what you went through. I was an air raid warden myself. <laughs> I didn't know that, were you? Yes, block captain. Had a helmet, pail of sand, and everything. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Love sends a little bit of roses. <laughs> My, that's nice, Mr. Gildersleeve. Do you sing? Sing? Oh, well, just for my own amazement. <laughs> well, maybe we should have a little music. Well, if you insist. I'll turn on the radio. Oh, oh yes. Good idea. <laughs> we'll keep it low so it won't disturb Craig. Oh, yeah. Pretty, isn't it? Lovely. <sighs> this is nice. Sitting here, listening to music. Mm-hmm. Funny. Yesterday, I didn't even know you. And now, here we are, listening to music. <sighs> Miss Tuttle. Yes? If you don't mind, I think I'll move my chair closer to, uh, closer to the fire. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, radio went off. That's funny. I wonder what's the matter. I don't know. Well, I'll take a look at it. No. What's the matter, Mr. Gildersleeve? You just sit there, Miss Tuttle. Well, all right. Don't get up. I won't. You just leave everything to me. I can handle this, all right. Sure you can. Fix ours all the time. You can ask Leroy. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve. You go right ahead. What? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, well, let's see here. Better turn this radio around so I can look in the back. <laughs> now then, let's take a look here. Uh, could be a tube. Do you think so? Well, could be. Better test them. Still hot. <laughs> Yeah. Now, let me see here. Do you see anything wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve? It's hard to say. A lot of wires in here. 
Pretty dark in here, too. Well, I have a flashlight. I'll see if I can find one. You better bring a screwdriver. And I'll need some pliers. And a pair of gloves will come in handy. Gloves? Yeah, I can see this is going to be quite a job. <laughs> Might have to tear the whole set apart. Good thing you had a man around. Well, I'll see what I can... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Here's what's the matter with the radio. Huh? What's that? You kicked the floor plug out when you moved the chair. Well. <laughs> By George. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. And you were going to take the radio apart. <laughs> well. Getting late. Ought to be going. <laughs> Good night, Miss Tuttle. The smoking stand. Didn't see it. I'll get it. Good night, Miss Tuttle. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Really, I am. It's quite all right. I'm, I'm sorry I laugh, but, you know, you're so different from most men I've known. Yes. Well, I better be going. Oh, just a moment, please. You know this colonel I worked for overseas, Mr. Gildersleeve? There was an efficient man for you. Never made a mistake. Did everything perfectly. I know. That's the kind of man you like. I couldn't stand him. Uh, uh what? I like men who make mistakes once in a while. Who are, who are human. Oh? And that's what I like about you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're human. <laughs> I am? <laughs> Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night. <laughs> That's what I am. Human. <laughs> Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. Discover for yourself how good parquet tastes when you spread it on bread, toast, and rolls. It's true. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for the margarine of craft quality. Parquet margarine made by craft. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Their favorite margarine is parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're back. Yes, I uh, uh, forgot my hat. You weren't wearing a hat, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, I wasn't? No, but come in anyway. Yeah, good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night. Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> If you're keeping a sharp eye on your food budget these days, here's an economical way to make leftovers taste extra good. Pour a rich golden Pabstet cheese sauce over leftovers of meat, chicken, vegetables, or fish. Presto, leftovers taste better than ever. Pabstet cheese food is a grand treat in snacks and sandwiches, too. And it's doubly delicious served with fruit or pie for dessert. Get Pabstet tomorrow in golden cheddar or pimento varieties. Ask for P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstet Cheese Food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.